This is Yunqi, an ordinary farmer from Shangwupu village, Chongli. Every morning Yun gets up and feeds his goldfish, waters his fresh flowers and cleans his home. In his spare time, he likes nothing more than to direct his village's young cold dance group. Even on the coldest winter's day, Yun can be seen outside conducting his dance troupe as they sway to the sound of gongs and drums. All of this would have been unimaginable just a year ago, when Yun was living in an earthen house and barely making ends meet as a struggling farmer. But like millions in China, Yun's life has dramatically changed for the better. Let's step into his home and discover just how dramatic that change has been. 220 kilometers outside of Beijing, on the edge of the Great Wall, sits the tiny district of Chongli, located in Jiangjiakou, Hebei province. Here, the winters are long and the temperatures low. Five years ago, the poverty rate in Chongli was as high as 16.8%. People lived in mud houses, ate coarse grains, and families had little money for decent new clothes. This, in Shangwupu village, Chongli, is where Yunqi calls home. This is Shangwupu, where Yun Daiye lives. And as you can see, it's very different. Since 2017, the local government has reconstructed 57 villages, bringing warm housing to the district's residents. On May 5, 2019, the Hubei Provincial Government officially approved Chongli District to withdraw from the poverty-stricken counties list, marking the district's official alleviation out of poverty. To witness that personally from the sidelines, from kind of on the front row of China's development has been an amazing thing to, to witness. And it's, it's like very impressionable to me because I've seen that five-year plan after five-year plan has methodically led to lifting millions of people out of poverty, creating jobs, giving people opportunities they couldn't, couldn't ever have imagined. In 2015, Beijing and Jiangjiakou won the right to host the 2022 Winter Olympics. Local officials have put their trust in snow and ice to inject fresh life into Chongli's economy, using it to create greater employment opportunities through opening ski resorts and hosting sport events. Chongli has now completed its transformation from a state-level impoverished district to an Olympic district. So behind me is one of the best ski resorts here in Chongli, Tai Wu Ski Resort. It covers a combined area of 40 square kilometers, has over 200 ski runs. As you can see behind me, the slopes are filling up fast, so I better go grab my skis and get on there. Xiangwan 
While seizing the opportunity of the Winter Olympics, Chongli is also exploring other ways to diversify its economy. The rapid development of mobile internet and e-commerce has in recent years led to a boom in live stream commerce, helping connect millions of small and independent sellers, especially from poor areas, with consumers. Mm, that's well, the most effective way to reduce poverty for the whole nation is economic growth. But sometimes economic growth doesn't reach every part of the country. So in addition to economic growth, targeted anti-poverty programs are very important. With new streets, new houses, compulsory education, the popularization of new rural cooperative medical care and the development of the internet, more and more people like Yunqi have returned to their hometowns from big cities. China is a great example of what needs to be done in order to reduce the number of poor people. And it did that by beginning to institute social policies uh, such as making sure that uh, social security, health care, education were available to everyone in society. China's poverty population has dropped from 98.99 million at the end of 2012 to 5.51 million at the end of 2019. And by the end of 2020, all 832 poverty-stricken counties were removed from China's poverty list. And in doing so, the announcement realized the government's ambition of lifting nearly 100 million poor people out of poverty. There are still millions of people living in poverty and how countries can deal with this problem is a massive challenge. However, perhaps China can offer a reference point from where to start. <laughs>